The following unexploded ordnance video is brought to you by the Bureau of Land Management. This video is intended to make BLM managers, staff on public lands, firefighters, law enforcement personnel, and hazmat coordinators aware of UXO risks and safety requirements when operating near hazard areas. In this video, you will become familiar with UXO history on BLM public lands, the Explosive Ordnance Disposal Specialist's role in detecting UXO, safety reporting concerns of BLM's hazmat specialist, firefighter, and law enforcement personnel. This video explains the proper precautions to take to help improve your safety on BLM public lands. Safety is your first priority. UXO, which stands for Unexploded Ordnance, results from the military's use of munitions and testing and training. Military munitions include bullets, bombs, rockets, pyrotechnics, grenades, projectiles, mortars, guided missiles, landmines, naval mines, submunitions, dispensers, cluster munitions, blasting caps, shells, fuses, pyrotechnic and explosive simulators, and other explosive items. Most military munitions contain some form of propellants, explosive, or pyrotechnic mixes to make them function properly. When a military munition has been primed, fused, armed, or otherwise prepared for action, and has been fired, dropped, launched, projected, or placed in such a manner that constitutes a hazard, and remains unexploded, it is considered UXO. Many people also refer to UXO as duds. These items, whether intact or not, are extremely dangerous and should never be touched or moved because they can still explode causing serious injury or death. Over 10 million acres of lands throughout the United States were previously used by the military and may have some form of UXO contamination. These lands have been transferred to non-military federal agencies, tribal, state, and local governments, and private parties. Any additional land that may be contaminated by UXO is no longer being used by the military and will require cleanup prior to transfer. BLM manages lands ranging from wide open spaces of the deserts and plains to wild, vast woodlands for many types of outdoor recreational activities. Some of these lands under BLM management are contaminated with UXO. The BLM has an interest in military munitions and unexploded ordnance, as it's called, on lands that we manage. To understand how we got to this position where we are managing these munitions and the risk associated with that, you have to understand the history of the United States and how it acquired its lands. As the United States moved off the East Coast and moved toward the West, they acquired title to the land from European powers and Mexico, as well as the Native Americans. Those lands became known as the public domain. The Bureau of Land Management manages the remnants of that original public domain. A lot of that domain went into private ownership through the Homestead Act or to railroad companies for the expansion of the railroads to the west, international forests, parklands, et cetera. But that which did not leave federal ownership or did not get a special designation, such as a national park, are managed by the Bureau of Land Management. Now, as the United States moved to the west, the military services also moved to the west. Obviously, uh, in those days, primarily the Army. And they set up frontier forts or took over existing forts. When I say an existing fort, I'm referring to Presidio San Francisco as an example. Frontier forts that are still in use today are Fort Huachuca in Arizona, Raleigh in Kansas. Those are examples. When, they, when the military set up that type of installation, the president, through an executive order, made public lands or the public domain lands available to the military to use. In World War II, we saw the biggest expansion of those types of military reservations. And at the height of World War II, there were approximately 38 million acres of public lands used by the military. Obviously, after World War II, not all those lands were needed for the Cold War period. And many of those lands returned to the management of the Department of Interior and the Bureau of Land Management. With those lands came the remnants of the military's use, which included buildings, roads, power lines, as well as impact ranges for military munitions and military maneuver areas where some of the uh, pyrotechnic type munitions or practice type munitions 
like a practice anti-tank mine, might have been used. Now, when those lands came back to Interior, the military did do a clearance of those lands and tried to, uh, made an attempt anyway, to return those lands as clean as possible. The technology that was available at that time frame was such that there's no way to guarantee 100% clean and very little was cleaned in the subsurface. So the Bureau of Land Management today manages in excess of 12 million acres that had been in military installations. And it's that residual military munitions on those lands that are of concern to us today. As a UXO safety specialist with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, my main function is to ensure that all operations are conducted in a safe manner. Our main thing is everything is safety, safety first, then quality, and then production. I ensure that ordnance is handled in a proper manner, and on Fort Ord, we are very lucky to have never had an explosive incident or accident. The most common ammunition you would find on Fort Ord are your projectiles and your 81 and your mortar family. The first rule of UXO safety is, if you didn't drop it, don't pick it up. If you find a UXO, remember the three R's of UXO safety. Recognize, retreat, report. Safety is your first priority. All BLM personnel are required to recognize the presence of UXO, retreat from an area where UXO is found, report the UXO to the proper authority, know the history of land, check with realty specialists for master title plat and historical index. No matter what their apparent age or condition, all UXO or suspected UXO must be considered fused, armed, and extremely dangerous. In the field, these items rust, as you, as you can see on the board. So treat all ordnance as live until proven otherwise by a qualified expert. How to get help if you encounter unexploded ordnance. First, call law enforcement or the nearest military installation. Next, call the BLM State Office. If you cannot reach anyone, call the BLM National Law Enforcement Office at 208-387-5126. For Alaska, contact 808-287-1524. How to report a UXO encounter. Report the UXO encounter as soon as you can safely make contact with the authorities. When near UXO, do not use any device that may transmit signals, such as mobile phones, pagers, or radios. Identify the location of the UXO. Make all observations as far away from the UXO as possible. Try to provide the following information. Location of the UXO. Who discovered the UXO and how to contact them. Condition of the UXO, type of ordnance, number of items visible, estimated size, distinctive features, nearby structures, public access to the vicinity. Safety is your first priority. Fort Ord has been in use since 1917 up to about 1993, I think it is. A lot of munitions have been fired during that time. One of the questions that's always asked is, is a munition that's been out here 50 years still dangerous? The short answer is yes. It will still kill you. Part of the uniqueness of managing the Fort Ord Public Lands is it's a partnership project with the communities, but also with the Army. And, and as the Army is cleaning up this former military base, we're usually coordinating with the Army on, on how it's going to be cleaned up and how quickly the properties will be turned over to the BLM. At Fort Ord, we have a multiple resource staff that includes uh, disciplines that are developing fuel brakes. Uh, some of them are doing uh, weed abatement. Uh, we do trail and road construction. Uh, we do a variety of, of facility maintenance activities as well as some law enforcement activities. So there's a variety of multiple use programs that are here. Um, one of, of course, the most important programs that we have is to in integrate safety in everything that we do at Fort Ord. The main thing is just um, keeping your eyes open and being aware. Um, we're biologists and we're out looking for plants and it's very easy to get focused on looking for a plant and just ignore things that are metal. We need to let people know they need to keep that kind of awareness. If I'm out on the site and we discover a UXO or someone that, like something that could be a UXO, um, the first thing we want to do is make sure that people aren't know about it, that aren't too close, that we step back from the site so we're not going to disturb it. 
And then the next thing we would do is if we have flagging with us, we'd flag it. Sometimes we're away from the track and we don't have it available, so we'd, then we'd have to look at landmarks and make sure we can find that site again. Although many of these sites were cleared on the surface, it is likely that not all munitions were discovered and removed. Left in place, UXO becomes more difficult to find, and over time, UXO can become more unstable. Even with today's technology, it is impossible to ensure 100% clearance of UXO from a site. A number of FUD sites have been cleared and have been determined to be safe for public use, as long as the proper safety precautions are taken. One of the things that we want you to do is to recognize what these munitions look like, recognize what the remnant parts you might see at a range would be, and if you see those, alert your fire boss, alert the overhead commander and anybody else that needs to be notified and get out of that area. You have a tendency to try to secure the munition so that nobody gets hurt. That in many cases is the wrong thing to do. You should not handle the munition yourself. If you see it on the ground or somebody points it out to you on the ground, leave it where it is. Call your, up your chain of command to the right person who will call a bomb squad or an explosive ordnance disposal military unit or if there's no one else to call, dial 911 and ask for a bomb squad. During field season, while working on BLM lands, which may have been formerly used defense sites, all field employees should be aware of their surroundings and aware of the fact that UXO may be present on the site. Weather and climate can affect the depth of UXO and buried munitions. Over time, buried UXO and munitions may become exposed through weather or wind erosion or migrate to the surface due to the freeze-thaw cycle of the soil. UXO comes in all shapes and sizes. Large UXO may be more visible on the surface of the ground than smaller UXO, which makes smaller UXO possibly more dangerous. UXO, such as grenades and submunitions, are small, more difficult to see, extremely hazardous, easily picked up and moved by souvenir hunters. No matter the size, shape, or physical condition of suspected UXO, do not pick it up. Don't move any closer to the object after observing it. Don't attempt to touch or remove an object attached to or near the suspected UXO. When reporting the UXO, don't use any communication devices, such as cell phones, near the UXO. This may cause it to explode. Remember the three R's, recognize, retreat, report. During firefighting, the risk of injury and death due to buried military munitions and UXO increases significantly. Wildfires may be hot enough to cause buried munitions and UXO to detonate. In the event of a wildfire, the best thing you can do is back off and let it burn. Maintain your fuel brakes. In the event that you do have to fight that fire, fight it from as far away as possible. Back burn if possible. If the area is an old impact area, you may have detonations. If it's a fast moving fire, you may have fewer detonations. If it's a slow burning fire that will heat up that ordinance, you will have detonations. We're on a fire incident and there has been an uh, unexploded ordinance um, there on the fire. Uh, the first thing we do, of course, is, is safety for myself and for my crew and any subordinates, anybody else that are there on the fire. Uh, we would definitely pull back. We find out, locate it, and, des and um, move away from that place, go back to a safe area in case that. Um, unexploded ordinance did detonate and we would make sure that the army hopefully they're already there with us on a fire but if not we would call them to come in and take a look at it once the fire has gone through. A designated ordinance impact zone or red zone is an active or inactive area pre-identified as a UXO impact site. Do not fight fires in red zones because heat from the fire and impact from the equipment may detonate UXO. Due to the risk of fighting fires in red zones no fire operation should be attempted within one mile of these zones unless the area is cleared by an explosive ordnance disposal unit. When BLM law enforcement has discovered potential UXO or is investigating UXO, the following protocol should be followed. The area should be evacuated and access should be restricted. The law enforcement authority should contact the nearest EOD unit, military installation, or local civilian law enforcement authority to report the UXO. As stated in the Incident Response Pocket Guide, recognizing unexploded ordnance is the first and most important step in reducing the risk posed by UXO. UXO may be found fully intact or in parts. All UXO, whether intact or in parts, 
present a potential hazard and should be taken seriously. Do not pick up any metal objects. They are not souvenirs. They can harm you and others. Parts of ordnance can be dangerous. UXO, regardless of age, retains its lethality. Remember, military ordnance is designed to destroy property and kill or maim people. Don't touch anything suspicious. UXO doesn't always look like UXO. Never disturb suspected UXO. Do not approach the item. Mark a location near the potential UXO item. Observe the size, shape, coloring, and number of items. Secure the area to protect others. Report the UXO to the proper authorities. Remember, your job does not include the removal of potential UXO items. Enjoy working in the great outdoors. Utilize these spaces, but don't forget how these lands were previously used. No matter what your work activity or favorite pastimes, be aware that UXO can still exist at former military installations. If you discover potential UXO, remember the three R's of UXO safety. Recognize, retreat, and report. And if you didn't drop it, don't pick it up. Safety is your first priority. Remember, safety is your first priority.